I recently played around with a trial version of an e-learning authoring tool called Evolve, which just upgraded to version 10. I was really impressed by what I saw, and I wanted to give a summary of my first impressions. Before I can talk at all about Evolve, I need to take a little bit of a detour and talk about Adapt. It's both open source and free. It's very powerful. It's highly customizable. All the things I want in an authoring tool. Unfortunately, there is a brutal installation process that involves either having access to a web server or setting up a virtual server, as well as entering some command line prompts to set up your own instance to be able to create courses. After several unsuccessful install attempts, I eventually gave up. Each time I came across some kind of command line error, when I Googled it, I couldn't find out what it even was in reference to, let alone try and troubleshoot. I have heard that the installation process may have gotten a little bit easier since, and I noticed that my friend Tom McDowell has a full tutorial for installing Adapt, so you might want to check that out. Fortunately, in 2021, I got a contract where I was tasked with uh, updating an existing course that was built in Adapt. I got to learn about the content hierarchy, the pros and cons of the user interface. Uh, there's a lot of dipping in and out of different Just screens and views of to adjust settings and properties. Content. I didn't mean for this to turn into an Adapt's first impression video, I promise. Let's actually talk about Evolve. Like I mentioned, Evolve just released version 10, and actually they've made some patches to that since, so it's like 10.06 or something. Anyway, they were recently acquired by a company called Intelum, or Intelum, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And I'm not completely sure about this history, but Evolve was based on Adapt, like was using the actual Adapt open source framework for the longest time. And then at some point fairly recently, maybe around version eight or nine, they switched off of that. And now they're using something extremely similar to Adapt. I don't know if that is considered a fork of the ADAPT code or how that works, but if you're familiar with ADAPT, you should be able to hop right into Evolve and hit the ground running. Coming from a slide-based authoring tool perspective, tools like ADAPT and Evolve have a different mindset that's required uh, when developing. Let me show you what I mean. So here in Evolve, we have the basic user interface. I have a page of a course pulled up is uh, part of its tutorial I went through. It's a little of a silly thing that uh, is about cats. So that's where you see all these references to cats. Um, so the page here is titled Cats One Pager because it was just a one page course. And you can see in the middle here, we have what I call the content hierarchy. Maybe there's an actual term for it, um, but that's what I am referring to it as in my head. So we have our page and then it's broken down by sections which are called articles and then inside each article there are blocks and inside the blocks are individual components and there are many different component types to choose from things like graphics text video interactive options knowledge check questions things like that i think once you get the hang of this hierarchy editing in evolve is not that difficult but getting your mind around that initially could be a challenge. Now, the thing I really like about uh, a tool like Evolve is you have the ability to switch to an actual quick preview mode, where instead of that outline view, you actually get to see the actual elements. And then when you hover over them, they're highlighted. And when you click on them, um, you get to uh, adjust the different settings and properties for each. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit because there are tons and tons of settings in Evolve. If I come here and I select the page, I have the page selected, so the page properties now pull up. In addition to that, all these different options that I have, I also have the ability to come here and I have sub menu items for those properties. I can adjust the page header, the hero image, the background image, etc. If I come over and switch to selecting something else, let me get out a quick preview here because uh, I'm used to working this way. So if I select the article, the first article here, I now get the properties for that article. I have a different set of submenu items for the article. The same thing with the block, the same thing with each component. And depending on what component you have selected, you'll have different menu options available to you. So obviously with a graphic, we have things like we're going to specify uh, what that asset is, where it's coming from, setting the alt text on that, things like that. Basic text, uh, much more straightforward. There's not as many menu options for that. 
One of the downsides I found to using Adapt was just navigating in and out of all these different pages and different screens and sets of properties, finding where the properties were. So it's really nice to have all that uh, always visible on the right hand side of the screen in the UI for Evolve. So you really can control everything and I truly mean everything. I, the only way you could get more complex with this if you were going in and editing the actual CSS uh, cascading style sheet file itself. So we also have course options, course settings here, uh, very similar in structure, but it's just out here on its own. And again, we have sub menu options for each one of these that are uh, completely unique to the course itself. Things as basic as just setting the course title down to uh, how we want things to behave. Additional things that I honestly, I haven't even gotten a chance to play around with these yet, but we have extensions. It allows you to bring in different functionality to your course that's not available by default. Uh, it probably saves some load time and things to not have all these automatically enabled. Here's where we control at a global level what the variables for the course are gonna be, what the triggers or actions as are called in other authoring tools often, uh, how those are gonna work and make our course interactive. And I even haven't even gotten into what dialogues are yet. So I'm looking forward to diving into that at some point. The thing that blew me away though were the theme options. Think about visual themes, think about other authoring tools and think about what your options are as far as how you can adjust those. You may have a lot of options in some, you may be extremely limited in others. With Evolve, you have, it's like 40 plus menu options for setting a visual theme. And then once you have everything exactly how you want it, you can go ahead and save that theme to use it for later. You can export a theme. And in addition to all these menu options, there's even sub menu options. That's how detailed you can get with setting your theme for your course. And just look at the number of fonts you can set. Now, all these options are great, but it can be a little bit overwhelming to try and remember, okay, I understand probably font one is gonna be my main header, maybe an H1, font two, maybe an H2 header two. How does that translate down into all these others when we're talking like font five and six? What is the difference? Where are the areas in a course? Which components and what areas of components is that actually gonna to translate to? If you're creating a giant website, that level of detail with your cascading style sheet and remembering all that kind of stuff is something that you're gonna be used to anyway. So this is really a true developer's tool in that sense. But take a look at these colors here. They actually have 25 different swatches to set for your colors. So you have your primary and then you have a darker version of your primary, secondary, darker version of that, tertiary and so on. And then there's all these different UI elements. And again, it goes back to, this is awesome to have this level of control but where, what does this translate to? Once I start to get into uh, content primary versus content secondary and things like that, like where, where is that gonna show up in my actual Evolve course? I mentioned the quick preview option before that adjusts the center area of the UI to show the course, to edit that way. But you can also, up here in the far upper right-hand corner, you can set a live preview as well. So once I click that, it opens up in a new tab. And then from there, if I wanted to, I could split those out to split my screen. Um, this isn't my big monitor, so it's a little bit limited in space, but you get the idea. So I can come through here and I can make changes. For example, I can switch which side these components live on in this block. And as you see, it instantly is reflected in the live preview. So I'm not having to come in, in here and constantly hit refresh. It's automatically happening. The same thing if I adjust any of the settings, that automatically will get immediately updated in the live preview mode. And that goes for the course settings as well. And just a few more elements that I wanted to point out, there is versioning as well. Um, so if you wanted to save a version as either a backup or something that you can refer to, um, perhaps at each stage of development, you wanna save a version. So at a prototype stage, you save a version for that. At an alpha build stage, save, save a version for that. Beta, gold, final, backup of a final, so on. You can also automatically have that versioning occur either daily or weekly. There's also a review system. So uh, it ties into the users of your instance. So let me back up a little bit. 
When you buy an Evolve license, you get an instance. And depending on how many active license holders you have tied to that instance, I think is the proper way to frame it, you can invite a certain number of editors. In addition to that, not counting towards your license number, you can invite users at a reviewer permission level to come in and review your course. The downside with that is they have to create an, I think it's an Intellum uh, account, but once they do that, they can come in and review any Evolve course, whether it's in your instance or someone else's. At least I think that's how it works. I really did like the commenting system itself. So you can go in here and for each course that you have an active review on, uh, it'll be listed here out in your instance homepage under reviews. And then you can pull that up and see all the individual comments here. This was just a test comment and reply I made to myself. Um, and it has a very robust set of options for setting the status, very similar to something like bug herd or some other kind of uh, testing or uh, bug fixing app or software system that you may be used to. So I like to see that. The, my one disappointment was uh, it didn't signify in any way that I could see where the actual comment was being made, um, either by saying the user was on this page at this article when they made the comment or providing a screenshot or anything like that. Since I'm here on the instance uh, homepage, I should probably talk about assets as well. So all your assets, your images, your fonts, your icons, all of that is going to be listed here in your assets panel, anything used in any course. Now, the cool thing about this is let's say you have a company logo and your company logo changes. You have that in 20 courses that are all in Evolve in your one instance. You can actually go in and update that logo image and it will automatically update in all your courses. The other thing I liked, you can pin a course to the top of your instance page, uh, which I think is very valuable because when I was working on that Adept contract, they were making an app and the app was relying on what was essentially like 30 or 40 courses with sub pages in them. So I was constantly navigating this master list of courses going back and forth scrolling up and down. And every time I made a change, it would take me back out to the top. If I had the ability to pin some courses to the top, it would have made my life much easier. So that's cool to see. Going back into my course, the final thing I wanna talk about is your publishing options. You do have obviously the ability to publish to SCORM, some basic options there. Um, there are specific options for publishing to different LMSs that I'm not familiar with, but they're called Exceed and Bloom. There's a beta for publishing X API content. You can create a standard HTML based course. The downside to that is then you need to go and either have some server space or find some that you can upload or FTP up those uh, files. So someone else can view them from some type of URL. And they also have this advanced publish tab. So if you needed to fine tune some SCORM published settings, if you're working with a finicky LMS, something like success factors that I have the pleasure of working with recently, I would, it would have been very nice to control some fine tune options here. And it was a lot to take in, uh, but I'm the kind of guy when it comes to these kind of tools, I really like drinking from the fire hose and just digging down into all the different options and sub options that I can get into. I actually enjoy that kind of stuff. I'm sure it can be completely overwhelming for others. Um, but to help my mind get around it, I did go out and uh, take certification that they've offered for level one learning evolve. And you can find that at experience.intellum.com. And this is something they've had for a while, but they recently updated it for Evolve version 10. So I was very fortunate that that update occurred while I was doing my trial version. So those are my final thoughts around uh, what my first impressions were of the Evolve authoring tool. I'm really glad I got a chance to play around with it and fully take advantage of my trial version. Uh, I would love to start working on this authoring tool on a regular basis for contract work. Adapt allows for a lot of this kind of stuff. It's very similar to Adapt, but with Evolve, especially version 10, the user interface is just so clean and um, I'm really looking forward to using it further. So if you wanna play around with it yourself, I highly recommend going out and getting the 21 day free trial, which you can find by going to intellum.com. Let me know what your thoughts are if you play around with it as well, or if you are currently using Evolve, what you like about it or don't like about it. Let me know in the comments. Uh, 
as far as future videos are concerned, I plan to do a lot more of this diving into tools, different tools, lesser known, lesser used tools. So if that is the kind of content that you think you might be interested in seeing, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like this video and all that other YouTube stuff that you know the drill on. And I will see you in the next video.